United Nations Convention on the Assignment of Receivables in International Trade. Done at New York on the 12th of December 2001, not yet in force. Preamble. The contracting states. Reaffirming their conviction that international trade on the basis of equality and mutual benefit is an important element in the promotion of friendly relations among states. Considering that problems created by uncertainties as to the content and the choice of legal regime applicable to the assignment of receivables constitute an obstacle to international trade. Desiring to establish principles and to adopt rules relating to the assignment of receivables that would create certainty and transparency and promote the modernization of the law relating to assignments of receivables, while protecting existing assignment practices and facilitating the development of new practices. Desiring also to ensure adequate protection of the interests of debtors in assignments of receivables being of the opinion that the adoption of uniform rules governing the assignment of receivables would promote the availability of capital and credit at more affordable rates and thus facilitate the development of international trade. Have agreed as follows. Chapter 1. Scope of Application, Article 1. Scope of Application. 1. This convention applies to a assignments of international receivables and to international assignments of receivables as defined in this chapter, if, at the time of conclusion of the contract of assignment, the assigner is located in a contracting state and b. subsequent assignments, provided that any prior assignment is governed by this convention. 2. This convention applies to subsequent assignments that satisfy the criteria set forth in paragraph 1 a. Of this article, even if it did not apply to any prior assignment of the same receivable. 3. This convention does not affect the rights and obligations of the debtor unless, at the time of conclusion of the original contract, the debtor is located in a contracting state or the law governing the original contract is the law of a contracting state. 4. The provisions of Chapter 5 apply to assignments of international receivables and to international assignments of receivables as defined in this chapter independently of paragraphs 1 to 3 of this article. However, those provisions do not apply if a state makes a declaration under Article 39. 5. The provisions of the Annex to this Convention apply as provided in Article 42. Article 2 assignment of receivables, for the purposes of this convention, a, assignment means the transfer by agreement from one person, assigner, to another person, assignee, of all or part of or an undivided interest in the assigner's contractual right to payment of a monetary sum, receivable, from a third person, the debtor. The creation of rights in receivables as security for indebtedness or other obligation is deemed to be a transfer, b, in the case of an assignment by the initial or any other assignee, subsequent assignment, the person who makes that assignment is the assigner and the person to whom that assignment is made is the assignee. Article 3. Internationality, a receivable is international if, at the time of conclusion of the original contract, the assigner and the debtor are located in different states. An assignment is international if, at the time of conclusion of the contract of assignment, the assigner and the assignee are located in different states. Article 4. Exclusions and other limitations, 1. This convention does not apply to assignments made, a, to an individual for his or her personal, family or household purposes, b, as part of the sale or change in the ownership or legal status of the business out of which the assigned receivables arose. 2. This convention does not apply to assignments of receivables arising under or from a. Transactions on a regulated exchange b. Financial contracts governed by netting agreements, except a receivable load on the termination of all outstanding transactions c. Foreign exchange transactions d. Interbank payment systems Interbank payment agreements or clearance and settlement systems relating to securities or other financial assets or instruments. 
e. the transfer of security rights in, sale, loan or holding of or agreement to repurchase securities or other financial assets or instruments held with an intermediary. f. Bank deposits. g. A letter of credit or independent guarantee. 3. Nothing in this convention affects the rights and obligations of any person under the law governing negotiable instruments. 4. Nothing in this convention affects the rights and obligations of the assigner and the debtor under special laws governing the protection of parties to transactions made for personal, family or household purposes. 5. Nothing in this convention, a, affects the application of the law of a state in which real property is situated to either, i, an interest in that real property to the extent that under that law the assignment of a receivable confers such an interest or, 2, the priority of a right in a receivable to the extent that under that law an interest in the real property confers such a right or, b, makes lawful the acquisition of an interest in real property not permitted under the law of the state in which the real property is situated. Chapter 2. General Provisions, Article 5. Definitions and Rules of Interpretation. For the purposes of this convention. a. Original contract means the contract between the assigner and the debtor from which the assigned receivable arises. b. Existing receivable means a receivable that arises upon or before conclusion of the contract of assignment and future receivable means a receivable that arises after conclusion of the contract of assignment. c. Writing means any form of information that is accessible so as to be usable for subsequent reference. Where this convention requires a writing to be signed, that requirement is met if by generally accepted means or a procedure agreed to by the person whose signature is required, the writing identifies that person and indicates that person's approval of the information contained in the writing. d. Notification of the assignment means a communication in writing that reasonably identifies the assigned receivables and the assignee. e. Insolvency administrator means a person or body including one appointed on an interim basis, authorized in an insolvency proceeding to administer the reorganization or liquidation of the assigner's assets or affairs. f. Insolvency proceeding means a collective judicial or administrative proceeding, including an interim proceeding, in which the assets and affairs of the assigner are subject to control or supervision by a court or other competent authority for the purpose of reorganization or liquidation. g. Priority means the right of a person in preference to the right of another person and, to the extent relevant for such purpose, includes the determination whether the right is a personal or a property right whether or not it is a security right for indebtedness or other obligation and whether any requirements necessary to render the right effective against a competing claimant have been satisfied. h. A person is located in the state in which it has its place of business. If the assigner or the assignee has a place of business in more than one state, the place of business is that place where the central administration of the assigner or the assignee is exercised. If the debtor has a place of business in more than one state, the place of business is that which has the closest relationship to the original contract. If a person does not have a place of business, reference is to be made to the habitual residence of that person, i. Law means the law in force in a state other than its rules of private international law, j. Proceeds means whatever is received in respect of an assigned receivable whether in total or partial payment or other satisfaction of the receivable. The term includes whatever is received in respect of proceeds. The term does not include returned goods. K. Financial contract means any spot, forward, future, option or swap transaction involving interest rates, commodities, currencies, equities, bonds, indices or any other financial instrument any repurchase or securities lending transaction, and any other transaction similar to any transaction referred to above entered into in financial markets and any combination of the transactions mentioned above. L. 
Netting agreement means an agreement between two or more parties that provides for one or more of the following. I, the net settlement of payments due in the same currency on the same date whether by innovation or otherwise. 2. Upon the insolvency or other default by a party, the termination of all outstanding transactions at their replacement or fair market values. Conversion of such sums into a single currency and netting into a single payment by one party to the other or. 3. The set-off of amounts calculated as set forth in subparagraph L2, of this article under two or more netting agreements. M. Competing claimant means. I. Another assignee of the same receivable from the same assigner, including a person who, by operation of law, claims a right in the assigned receivable as a result of its right in other property of the assigner, even if that receivable is not an international receivable and the assignment to that assignee is not an international assignment. 2. A creditor of the assigner or. 3. The insolvency administrator. Article 6. Party autonomy, subject to Article 19, the assigner, the assignee and the debtor may derogate from or vary by agreement provisions of this convention relating to their respective rights and obligations. Such an agreement does not affect the rights of any person who is not a party to the agreement. Article 7. Principles of Interpretation, 1. In the interpretation of this convention. Regard is to be had to its object and purpose as set forth in the preamble, to its international character and to the need to promote uniformity in its application and the observance of good faith in international trade. 2. Questions concerning matters governed by this convention that are not expressly settled in it are to be settled in conformity with the general principles on which it is based or, in the absence of such principles, in conformity with the law applicable by virtue of the rules of private international law. Chapter 3. Effects of Assignment, Article 8. Effectiveness of Assignments. 1. An assignment is not ineffective as between the assigner and the assignee, or as against the debtor or as against a competing claimant, and the right of an assignee may not be denied priority on the ground that it is an assignment of more than one receivable, future receivables or parts of or undivided interests in receivables, provided that the receivables are described a. individually as receivables to which the assignment relates or b. in any other manner, provided that they can, at the time of the assignment or, in the case of future receivables, at the time of conclusion of the original contract be identified as receivables to which the assignment relates. 2. Unless otherwise agreed, an assignment of one or more future receivables is effective without a new act of transfer being required to assign each receivable. 3. Except as provided in paragraph 1 of this article, article 9 and article 10, paragraphs 2 and 3. This convention does not affect any limitations on assignments arising from law. Article 9. Contractual Limitations on Assignments, 1. An assignment of a receivable is effective notwithstanding any agreement between the initial or any subsequent assigner and the debtor or any subsequent assignee limiting in any way the assigner's right to assign its receivables. 2. Nothing in this article affects any obligation or liability of the assigner for breach of such an agreement, but the other party to such agreement may not avoid the original contract or the assignment contract on the sole ground of that breach. A person who is not party to such an agreement is not liable on the sole ground that it had knowledge of the agreement. 3. This article applies only to assignments of receivables. A arising from an original contract that is a contract for the supply or lease of goods or services other than financial services, a construction contract or a contract for the sale or lease of real property. b. arising from an original contract for the sale, lease or license of industrial or other intellectual property or of proprietary information. c. representing the payment obligation for a credit card transaction or d. 
owed to the assignor upon net settlement of payments due pursuant to a netting agreement involving more than two parties. Article 10. Transfer of security rights. 1. A personal or property right securing payment of the assigned receivable is transferred to the assignee without a new act of transfer. If such a right, under the law governing it, is transferable only with a new act of transfer, the assigner is obliged to transfer such right and any proceeds to the assignee. 2. A right securing payment of the assigned receivable is transferred under paragraph 1 of this article notwithstanding any agreement between the assigner and the debtor or other person granting that right, limiting in any way the assigner's right to assign the receivable or the right securing payment of the assigned receivable. 3. Nothing in this article affects any obligation or liability of the assigner for breach of any agreement under paragraph 2 of this article, but the other party to that agreement may not avoid the original contract or the assignment contract on the sole ground of that breach. A person who is not a party to such an agreement is not liable on the sole ground that it had knowledge of the agreement. 4. Paragraphs 2 and 3 of this article apply only to assignments of receivables. a. Arising from an original contract that is a contract for the supply or lease of goods or services other than financial services, a construction contract or a contract for the sale or lease of real property. b. Arising from an original contract for the sale, lease or license of industrial or other intellectual property or of proprietary information c. Representing the payment obligation for a credit card transaction or d. Owed to the assigner upon net settlement of payments due pursuant to a netting agreement involving more than two parties. 5. The transfer of a possessory property right under paragraph 1 of this article does not affect any obligations of the assigner to the debtor or the person granting the property right with respect to the property transferred existing under the law governing that property right. 6. Paragraph 1 of this article does not affect any requirement under rules of law other than this convention relating to the formal registration of the transfer of any rights securing payment of the assigned receivable. Chapter 4. Rights, Obligations and Defenses, Section I Assigner and Assignee, Article 11. Rights and Obligations of the Assigner and the Assignee, 1. The mutual rights and obligations of the assigner and the assignee arising from their agreement are determined by the terms and conditions set forth in that agreement, including any rules or general conditions referred to therein. 2. The assigner and the assignee are bound by any usage to which they have agreed and, unless otherwise agreed, by any practices they have established between themselves. 3. In an international assignment. The assigner and the assignee are considered, unless otherwise agreed, implicitly to have made applicable to the assignment a usage that in international trade is widely known to, and regularly observed by, parties to the particular type of assignment or to the assignment of the particular category of receivables. Article 12. Representations of the Assigner. 1. Unless otherwise agreed between the assigner and the assignee. The assigner represents at the time of conclusion of the contract of assignment that a. The assigner has the right to assign the receivable. b. The assigner has not previously assigned the receivable to another assignee and c. The debtor does not and will not have any defenses or rights or set off. 2. Unless otherwise agreed between the assigner and the assignee, the assigner does not represent that the debtor has or will have, the ability to pay. Article 13. Right to notify the debtor, 1. Unless otherwise agreed between the assigner and the assignee, the assigner or the assignee or both may send the debt notification of the assignment and a payment instruction, but after notification has been sent only the assignee may send such an instruction. 2. Notification of the assignment or a payment instruction sent in breach of any agreement referred to in paragraph 1 of this article is not ineffective for the purposes of Article 17 by reason of such breach. However, 
Nothing in this article affects any obligation or liability of the party in breach of such an agreement for any damages arising as a result of the breach. Article 14. Right to Payment. 1. As between the assigner and the assignee, unless otherwise agreed and whether or not notification of the assignment has been sent. a. If payment in respect of the assigned receivable is made to the assignee, the assignee is entitled to retain the proceeds and goods returned in respect of the assigned receivable. b. If payment in respect of the assigned receivable is made to the assigner, the assignee is entitled to payment of the proceeds and also to goods returned to the assigner in respect of the assigned receivable and c. If payment in respect of the assigned receivable is made to another person over whom the assignee has priority, the assignee is entitled to payment of the proceeds and also to goods returned to such person in respect of the assigned receivable. 2. The assignee may not retain more than the value of its right in the receivable. Section 2. Debtor, Article 15. Principle of Debtor Protection, 1. Except as otherwise provided in this convention, an assignment does not, without the consent of the debtor, affect the rights and obligations of the debtor, including the payment terms contained in the original contract. 2. A payment instruction may change the person, address or account to which the debtor is required to make payment but may not change, a, the currency of payment specified in the original contract or, b, the state specified in the original contract in which payment is to be made to a state other than that in which the debtor is located. Article 16. Notification of the debtor, 1. Notification of the assignment or a payment instruction is effective when received by the debtor if it is in a language that is reasonably expected to inform the debtor about its contents. It is sufficient if notification of the assignment or a payment instruction is in the language of the original contract. 2. Notification of the assignment or a payment instruction may relate to receivables arising after notification. 3. Notification of a subsequent assignment constitutes notification of all prior assignments. Article 17. Debtors discharge by payment. 1. Until the debtor receives notification of the assignment, the debtor is entitled to be discharged by paying in accordance with the original contract. 2. After the debtor receives notification of the assignment, subject to paragraphs 3 to 8 of this article, the debtor is discharged only by paying the assignee or, if otherwise instructed in the notification of the assignment or subsequently by the assignee in a writing received by the debtor, in accordance with such payment instruction. 3. If the debtor receives more than one payment instruction relating to a single assignment of the same receivable by the same assigner, the debtor is discharged by paying in accordance with the last payment instruction received from the assignee before payment. 4. If the debtor receives notification of more than one assignment of the same receivable made by the same assigner, the debtor is discharged by paying in accordance with the first notification received. 5. If the debtor receives notification of one or more subsequent assignments, the debtor is discharged by paying in accordance with the notification of the last of such subsequent assignments. 6. If the debtor receives notification of the assignment of a part of or an undivided interest in one or more receivables, the debtor is discharged by paying in accordance with the notification or in accordance with this article as if the debtor had not received the notification. If the debtor pays in accordance with the notification, the debtor is discharged only to the extent of the part or undivided interest paid. 7. If the debtor receives notification of the assignment from the assignee, the debtor is entitled to request the assignee to provide within a reasonable period of time adequate proof that the assignment from the initial assigner to the initial assignee and any intermediate assignment have been made and, unless the assignee does so, the debtor is discharged by paying in accordance with this article as if the notification from the assignee had not been received. 
adequate proof of an assignment includes but is not limited to any writing emanating from the assigner and indicating that the assignment has taken place. 8. This article does not affect any other ground on which payment by the debtor to the person entitled to payment, to a competent judicial or other authority, or to a public deposit fund discharges the debtor. Article 18. Defenses and rights of set-off of the debtor, 1. In a claim by the assignee against the debtor for payment of the assigned receivable, the debtor may raise against the assignee all defenses and rights of set-off arising from the original contract, or any other contract that was part of the same transaction, of which the debtor could avail itself as if the assignment had not been made and such claim were made by the assigner. 2. The debtor may raise against the assignee any other right of set-off, provided that it was available to the debtor at the time notification of the assignment was received by the debtor. 3. Notwithstanding paragraphs 1 and 2 of this article, defenses and rights of set-off that the debtor may raise pursuant to Article 9 or 10 against the assigner for breach of an agreement limiting in any way the assigner's right to make the assignment are not available to the debtor against the assignee. Article 19. Agreement not to raise defenses or rights or set-off 1. The debtor may agree with the assigner in a writing signed by the debt not to raise against the assignee the defenses and rights of set-off that it could raise pursuant to Article 18. Such an agreement precludes the debtor from raising against the assignee those defenses and rights of set-off. 2. The debtor may not waive defenses, a. arising from fraudulent acts on the part of the assignee or, b. based on the debtor's incapacity. 3. Such an agreement may be modified only by an agreement in a writing signed by the debtor. The effect of such a modification as against the assignee is determined by Article 20, Paragraph 2. Article 20. Modification of the original contract, 1. An agreement concluded before notification of the assignment between the assigner and the debtor that affects the assignee's rights is effective as against the assignee and the assignee acquires corresponding rights. 2. An agreement concluded after notification of the assignment between the assigner and the debtor that affects the assignee's rights is ineffective as against the assignee unless a. the assignee consents to it or b. the receivable is not fully earned by performance and either the modification is provided for in the original contract or, in the context of the original contract, a reasonable assignee would consent to the modification. 3. Paragraphs 1 and 2 of this article do not affect any right of the assigner or the assignee arising from breach of an agreement between them. Article 21. Recovery of payments, failure of the assigner to perform the original contract does not entitle the debtor to recover from the assignee a sum paid by the debtor to the assigner or the assignee. Section 3. Third parties. Article 22. Law applicable to competing rights, with the exception of matters that are settled elsewhere in this convention and subject to Articles 23 and 24, the law of the state in which the assigner is located governs the priority of the right of an assignee and the assigned receivable over the right of a competing claimant. Article 23. Public Policy and Mandatory Rules. 1. The application of a provision of the law of the state in which the assigner is located may be refused only if the application of that provision is manifestly contrary to the public policy of the forum state. 2. The rules of the law of either the forum state or any other state that are mandatory irrespective of the law otherwise applicable may not prevent the application of a provision of the law of the state in which the assigner is located. 3. Notwithstanding paragraph 2 of this article, in an insolvency proceeding commenced in a state other than the state in which the assigner is located, any preferential right that arises, by operation of law, under the law of the forum state and is given priority over the rights of an assignee in insolvency proceedings under the law of that state may be given priority notwithstanding article 22. A state may deposit at any time a declaration identifying any such preferential right. Article 24. 
special rules on proceeds, 1. If proceeds are received by the assignee, the assignee is entitled to retain those proceeds to the extent that the assignee's right in the assigned receivable had priority over the right of a competing claimant in the assigned receivable. 2. If proceeds are received by the assigner, the right of the assignee in those proceeds has priority over the right of a competing claimant in those proceeds to the same extent as the assignee's right had priority over the right in the assigned receivable of that claimant if a. The assigner has received the proceeds under instructions from the assignee to hold the proceeds for the benefit of the assignee and b. The proceeds are held by the assigner for the benefit of the assignee separately and are reasonably identifiable from the assets of the assigner, such as in the case of a separate deposit or securities account containing only proceeds consisting of cash or securities. 3. Nothing in paragraph 2 of this article affects the priority of a person having against the proceeds a right of set for a right created by agreement and not derived from a right in the receivable. Article 25. Subordination. An assignee entitled to priority may at any time subordinate its priority unilaterally or by agreement in favor of any existing or future assignees. Chapter 5. Autonomous Conflict of Laws Rules, Article 26. Application of Chapter 5, the provisions of this chapter apply to matters that are, a, within the scope of this convention as provided in Article 1, Paragraph 4 and, b, otherwise within the scope of this convention but not settled elsewhere in it. Article 27. Form of a Contract of Assignment, 1. A contract of assignment concluded between persons who are located in the same state is formally valid as between them if it satisfies the requirements of either the law which governs it or the law of the state in which it is concluded. 2. A contract of assignment concluded between persons who are located in different states is formally valid as between them if it satisfies the requirements of either the law which governs it or the law of one of those states. Article 28. Law applicable to the mutual rights and obligations of the assigner and the assignee, 1. The mutual rights and obligations of the assigner and the assignee arising from their agreement are governed by the law chosen by them. 2. In the absence of a choice of law by the assigner and the assignee, their mutual rights and obligations arising from their agreement are governed by the law of the state with which the contract of assignment is most closely connected. Article 29. Law applicable to the rights and obligations of the assignee and the debtor, the law governing the original contract determines the effectiveness of contractual limitations on assignment as between the assignee and the debtor, the relationship between the assignee and the debtor, the conditions under which the assignment can be invoked against the debtor and whether the debtor's obligations have been discharged. Article 30. Law applicable to priority, 1. The law of the state in which the assigner is located governs the priority of the right of an assignee in the assigned receivable over the right of a competing claimant. 2. The rules of the law of either the forum state or any other state that are mandatory irrespective of the law otherwise applicable may not prevent the application of a provision of the law of the state in which the assigner is located. 3. Notwithstanding paragraph 2 of this article, in an insolvency proceeding commenced in a state other than the state in which the assigner is located, any preferential right that arises, by operation of law, under the law of the forum state and is given priority over the rights of an assignee in insolvency proceedings under the law of that state may be given priority notwithstanding paragraph 1 of this article. Article 31. Mandatory Rules. 1. Nothing in Articles 27 to 29 restricts the application of the rules of the law of the forum state in a situation where they are mandatory irrespective of the law otherwise applicable. 2. Nothing in Articles 27 to 29 restricts the application of the mandatory rules of the law of another state with which the matters settled in those articles have a close connection if and insofar as, under the law of that other state. Those rules must be applied irrespective of the law otherwise applicable. Article 32. 
public policy, with regard to matters settled in this chapter, the application of a provision of the law specified in this chapter may be refused only if the application of that provision is manifestly contrary to the public policy of the forum state. Chapter 6. Final Provisions, Article 33. Depository. The Secretary General of the United Nations is the depository of this convention. Article 34. Signature, Ratification, Acceptance, Approval, Accession, 1. This convention is open for signature by all states at the headquarters of the United Nations in New York until 31 December 2003. 2. This convention is subject to ratification, acceptance or approval by the signatory states. 3. This convention is open to accession by all states that are not signatory states as from the date it is open for signature. 4. Instruments of ratification, acceptance, approval and accession are to be deposited with the Secretary General of the United Nations. Article 35. Application to Territorial Units, 1. If a state has two or more territorial units in which different systems of law are applicable in relation to the matters dealt with in this convention, it may at any time declare that this convention is to extend to all its territorial units or only one or more of them, and may at any time substitute another declaration for its earlier declaration. 2. Such declarations are to state expressly the territorial units to which this convention extends. 3. If, by virtue of a declaration under this article, this convention does not extend to all territorial units of a state and the assignor or the debtor is located in a territorial unit to which this convention does not extend, this location is considered not to be in a contracting state. 4. If, by virtue of a declaration under this article, this convention does not extend to all territorial units of a state and the law governing the original contract is the law in force in a territorial unit to which this convention does not extend, the law governing the original contract is considered not to be the law of a contracting state. 5. If a state makes no declaration under paragraph 1 of this article, the convention is to extend to all territorial units of that state. Article 36. Location in a territorial unit, if a person is located in a state which has two or more territorial units, that person is located in the territorial unit in which it has its place of business. If the assigner or the assignee has a place of business in more than one territorial unit, the place of business is that place where the central administration of the assigner or the assignee is exercised. If the debtor has a place of business in more than one territorial unit, the place of business is that which has the closest relationship to the original contract. If a person does not have a place of business, reference is to be made to the habitual residence of that person. A state with two or more territorial units may specify by declaration at any time other rules for determining the location of a person within that state. Article 37. Applicable law in territorial units, any reference in this convention to the law of a state means, in the case of a state which has two or more territorial units, the law in force in the territorial unit. Such a state may specify by declaration at any time other rules for determining the applicable law, including rules that render applicable the law of another territorial unit of that state. Article 38. Conflicts with other international agreements. 1. This convention does not prevail over any international agreement that has already been or may be entered into and that specifically governs a transaction otherwise governed by this convention. 2. Notwithstanding paragraph 1 of this article, this convention prevails over the UNIDROIT Convention on International Factoring, the Ottawa Convention. To the extent that this convention does not apply to the rights and obligations of a debtor, it does not preclude the application of the Ottawa Convention with respect to the rights and obligations of that debtor. Article 39. Declaration on Application of Chapter 5. A state may declare at any time that it will not be bound by Chapter 5. Article 40. 
limitations relating to governments and other public entities, a state may declare at any time that it will not be bound or the extent to which it will not be bound by Articles 9 and 10 if the debtor or any person granting a personal or property right securing payment of the assigned receivable is located in that state at the time of conclusion of the original contract and is a government, central or local, any subdivision thereof, or an entity constituted for a public purpose. If a state has made such a declaration, Articles 9 and 10 do not affect the rights and obligations of that debtor or person. A state may list in a declaration the types of entity that are neither subject of a declaration. Article 41. Other Exclusions 1. A state may declare at any time that it will not apply this convention to specific types of assignment or to the assignment of specific categories of receivables clearly described in a declaration. 2. After a declaration under paragraph 1 of this article takes effect. a. This convention does not apply to such types of assignment or to the assignment of such categories of receivables if the assigner is located at the time of conclusion of the contract of assignment in such a state and b. The provisions of this convention that affect the rights and obligations of the debtor do not apply if, at the time of conclusion of the original contract, the debtor is located in such a state or the law governing the original contract is the law of such a state. 3. This article does not apply to assignments of receivables listed in Article 9, Paragraph 3. Article 42. Application of the Annex. 1. A state may at any time declare that it will be bound by a. The priority rules set forth in Section I of the Annex and will participate in the international registration system established pursuant to Section 2 of the Annex. b. The priority rules set forth in Section I of the Annex and will effectuate such rules by use of a registration system that fulfills the purposes of such rules, in which case, for the purposes of Section I of the Annex. Registration pursuant to such a system has the same effect as registration pursuant to Section 2 of the Annex. c. The priority rules set forth in Section 3 of the Annex. d. The priority rules set forth in Section 4 of the Annex or e. The priority rules set forth in Articles 7 and 9 of the Annex. 2. For the purposes of Article 22. a. The law of a state that has made a declaration pursuant to paragraph 1, a, or, b, of this article is the set of rules set forth in section i of the Annex, as affected by any declaration made pursuant to paragraph 5 of this article. b, the law of a state that has made a declaration pursuant to paragraph 1, c, of this article is the set of rules set forth in section 3 of the Annex as affected by any declaration made pursuant to paragraph 5 of this article. c. The law of a state that has made a declaration pursuant to paragraph 1, d, of this article is the set of rules set forth in section 4 of the Annex, as affected by any declaration made pursuant to paragraph 5 of this article and d. The law of a state that has made a declaration pursuant to paragraph 1, e, of this article is the set of rules set forth in Articles 7 and 9 of the Annex, as affected by any declaration made pursuant to paragraph 5 of this article. 3. A state that has made a declaration pursuant to paragraph 1 of this article may establish rules pursuant to which contracts of assignment concluded before the declaration takes effect become subject to those rules within a reasonable time. 4. A state that has not made a declaration pursuant to paragraph 1 of this article may, in accordance with priority rules in force in that state, utilize the registration system established pursuant to section 2 of the Annex. 5. At the time a state makes a declaration pursuant to paragraph 1 of this article or thereafter, it may declare that a. It will not apply the priority rules chosen under paragraph 1 of this article to certain types of assignment or to the assignment of certain categories of receivables or b. 
it will apply those priority rules with modifications specified in that declaration. 6. At the request of contracting or signatory states to this convention comprising not less than one-third of the contracting and signatory states, the depository shall convene a conference of the contracting and signatory states to designate the supervising authority in the first registrar and to prepare or revise the regulations referred to in Section 2 of the Annex. Article 43. Effect of Declaration, 1. Declarations made under Articles 35, Paragraph 1, 36, 37 or 39 to 42 at the time of signature are subject to confirmation upon ratification, acceptance or approval. 2. Declarations and confirmations of declarations are to be in writing and to be formally notified to the depository. 3. A declaration takes effect simultaneously with the entry into force of this convention in respect of the state concerned. However, a declaration of which the depository receives formal notification after such entry into force takes effect on the first day of the month following the expiration of six months after the date of its receipt by the depository. 4. A state that makes a declaration under Articles 35, Paragraph 1. 36, 37 or 39 to 42 may withdraw it at any time by a formal notification in writing addressed to the depository. Such withdrawal takes effect on the first day of the month following the expiration of six months after the date of the receipt of the notification by the depository. 5. In the case of a declaration under Articles 35, Paragraph 1, 36, 37 or 39 to 42 that takes effect after the entry into force of this convention in respect of the state concerned or in the case of a withdrawal of any such declaration, the effect of which in either case is to cause a rule in this convention, including any annex, to become applicable. a. Except as provided in paragraph 5, b. of this article. That rule is applicable only to assignments for which the contract of assignment is concluded on or after the date when the declaration or withdrawal takes effect in respect of the contracting state referred to in Article 1, Paragraph 1, A. B. A rule that deals with the rights and obligations of the debtor applies only in respect of original contracts concluded on or after the date when the declaration or withdrawal takes effect in respect of the contracting state referred to in Article 1, Paragraph 3. 6. In the case of a declaration under Articles 35, Paragraph 1, 36. 37 or 39 to 42 that takes effect after the entry into force of this convention in respect of the state concerned or in the case of a withdrawal of any such declaration, the effect of which in either case is to cause a rule in this convention, including any annex, to become inapplicable. a. Except as provided in paragraph 6, b. of this article. That rule is inapplicable to assignments for which the contract of assignment is concluded on or after the date when the declaration or withdrawal takes effect in respect of the contracting state referred to in Article 1, Paragraph 1, A. B. A rule that deals with the rights and obligations of the debtor is inapplicable in respect of original contracts concluded on or after the date when the declaration or withdrawal takes effect in respect of the contracting state referred to in Article 1, Paragraph 3. 7. If a rule rendered applicable or inapplicable as a result of a declaration or withdrawal referred to in paragraph 5 or 6 of this article is relevant to the determination of priority with respect to a receivable for which the contract of assignment is concluded before such declaration or withdrawal takes effect or with respect to its proceeds, the right of the assignee has priority over the right of a competing claimant to the extent that under the law that would determine priority before such declaration or withdrawal takes effect, the right of the assignee would have priority. Article 44. Reservations, no reservations are permitted except those expressly authorized in this convention. Article 45. Entry into force, 1. 
This convention enters into force on the first day of the month following the expiration of six months from the date of deposit of the fifth instrument of ratification, acceptance, approval or accession with the depository. 2. For each state that becomes a contracting state to this convention after the date of deposit of the fifth instrument of ratification, acceptance, approval or accession, this convention enters into force on the first day of the month following the expiration of six months after the date of deposit of the appropriate instrument on behalf of that state. 3. This convention applies only to assignments if the contract of assignment is concluded on or after the date when this convention enters into force in respect of the contracting state referred to in Article 1, Paragraph 1, A, provided that the provisions of this convention that deal with the rights and obligations of the debtor apply only to assignments of receivables arising from original contracts concluded on or after the date when this convention enters into force in respect of the contracting state referred to in Article 1, Paragraph 3. 4. If a receivable is assigned pursuant to a contract of assignment concluded before the date when this convention enters into force in respect of the contracting state referred to in Article 1, Paragraph 1, A, the right of the assignee has priority over the right of a competing claimant with respect to the receivable to the extent that, under the law that would determine priority in the absence of this convention, the right of the assignee would have priority. Article 46. Denunciation, 1. A contracting state may denounce this convention at any time by written notification addressed to the depository. 2. The denunciation takes effect on the first day of the month following the expiration of one year after the notification is received by the depository. Where a longer period is specified in the notification, the denunciation takes effect upon the expiration of such longer period after the notification is received by the depository. 3. This convention remains applicable to assignments if the contract of assignment is concluded before the date when the denunciation takes effect in respect of the contracting state referred to in Article 1, Paragraph 1, A provided that the provisions of this convention that deal with the rights and obligations of the debtor remain applicable only to assignments of receivables arising from original contracts concluded before the date when the denunciation takes effect in respect of the contracting state referred to in Article 1, Paragraph 3. 4. If a receivable is assigned pursuant to a contract of assignment concluded before the date when the denunciation takes effect in respect of the contracting state referred to in Article 1, Paragraph 1, A, the right of the assignee has priority over the right of a competing claimant with respect to the receivable to the extent that, under the law that would determine priority under this convention, the right of the assignee would have priority. Article 47. Revision and Amendment, 1. At the request of not less than one-third of the contracting states to this convention, the depository shall convene a conference of the contracting states to revise or amend it. 2. Any instrument of ratification, acceptance, approval or accession deposited after the entry into force of an amendment to this convention is deemed to apply to the convention as amended. 